Once you have your artwork in place on your box, now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the lighting and the shadows on this, which is really what's going to be what makes it look realistic. And again, the, the goal here is to make this look uh, believable and realistic. And increasingly, this is the way we do packaging design before we actually start manufacturing or mocking up the actual boxes. Uh, you'll show a client a 3D render of it before they'll give the go ahead to move forward. So you want this to look as realistic as possible. So we're going to work on the lighting and shadows on here. Now, I always tell all my graphic design students, you really should take a basic drawing class. And the reason for that is just so you can learn about light and shadow, because increasingly in graphic design and working in Photoshop and, and, and combining photos together and creating realistic scenes, if you don't understand how light and shadow works, uh, it's going to be a real handicap and you're going to really, uh, the believability of the scenes or the uh, renderings you create isn't going to be as realistic. So just to give you an overview here on the sphere shape, if my lighting source is up here in the upper right hand corner and the light comes down here, you're going to see direct light. There'd be a highlight here and the highlight's going to kind of blow out your artwork a little bit. As the light wraps around here, you'll get some of the realistic, whatever color the sphere is, you would get the realistic color in here, but then it's going to start fading into shadow. And then you're going to get what we call the shadow core, the core shadow. This is going to be the darkest part of the shadow on uh, your object. But here's the thing. If my light source is up here, some of the light is going to go over and, and around my shape here. It's going to hit whatever background I have, and some of that light is going to bounce back up and reflect back up on the sphere here. So even though this drops into shadow, you're going to see it actually doesn't stay dark. It still gets a little lighter here. Then underneath here, we have what's referred to as the cast shadow, and that's that shadow shape that we placed under the box. And the important thing to understand about the cast shadow where the shadow is closest to the object, it's going to be the sharpest. Now, it's not a sharp edge here. You can see it's a little blurry down here. But as the shadow falls away from the object, you're going to notice it gets blurrier and blurrier. And I'll show you that on something that's more uh, appropriate for our box here. Here's the front of your box. And you'll see here, now in this case, and it's the way that our render is, our light source is up here. And that's the way we're going to light the box. And you'll notice here's where the edge up here gets a little lighter, where the highlight is. We don't have a top on the box right now. Now, if you've done a, uh, a smaller box, say a box designed for T or something, you may want to be putting that top panel in there so we can see it. But for the vast majority of you, you're going to uh, just be showing the front and the side. So here's your front. The light source is hitting it. You're going to have a little bit of a highlight up here. Here's our side panel, and it's in shadow. But remember, it's going to be darkest here along the edge, but you're going to get some of that reflected light. The light would be going over your box, hitting either the surface it's on or a background, and then bouncing back up and putting a little bit of light on here. So we want to make sure that we indicate that. Then we have the cast shadow, which we have that shape in there that we're going to work with. So let's go over here to your box design. Now, what you want to make sure you do is um, wherever possible, you never want to do anything to your underlying artwork that you cannot undo. And um, that's not always the case. There are going to be situations where you actually have to do some work on your artwork. But you always want to work in a way so that if you have to go back and make changes, your client comes back and has revisions, you can adjust it. So let's talk about the front of the box here. We're going to talk about that highlight. So our light source is up here in the upper left. It's coming down here. It's hitting the box. It's illuminating the front of the box. And it's going to get a little lighter up here at this edge. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the lighting here with adjustment layers. So I'm going to click on this front artwork. And I'm going to do an adjustment layer on this layer, but I only want this adjustment layer to affect the front. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add an adjustment layer. But like I said, I only want it to affect this front panel. So hold the option key down on your keyboard and click on this. And we're going to come up here to hue and saturation. And when you do that, you'll get this dialog box. Again, we only want this to affect this layer. So if you click this, that will guarantee that this effect will only affect this front panel. It won't affect the side panel or the shadow or anything else. Go ahead and hit OK. 
and then you're going to get in properties these options here now we're not playing with the color on this we're just playing with the lightness on here so i'm going to come down here where it says lightness and i'm going to boost this up a little bit you don't need to go crazy with it you could probably just go like 15 points on here um, the thing is we can always go back and change this if we want to so I've got this set up. I'll go ahead and nest properties over here. So here's my front panel. You can see here's my hue and saturation la uh, adjustment layer. But here's the thing. I don't want the highlight light to go completely over this box. It's really going to only kind of crescendo up and be lighter up at this corner up here. So what I'm going to do is uh, come over here to my adjustment layer. And whenever you add an adjustment layer, it gives you a mask on here. So this means what I can do is I can mask at, mask out where I don't want this light. And what I want to do is have kind of a gradation of light across here. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to use my gradation tool or the gradient tool here. And I'm going to put a gradation from black to white up here so that the only light you see is going to be up here on this corner. So make sure you're on this mask layer and I'm going to click and drag my gradient up here. And let's see how that looks. If you want to see what your gradient looks or you, what the mask looks like, if you hold the option key down and click on it, here's what my mask looks like on there. And if you, so that you can see the uh, mask in here. I'm just going to click off that so we can see it. Let's see here. There we go. Um, so if I turn this effect off here on the adjustment layer, you can see just a little bit of a highlight up there on that upper right hand corner. Now the beauty of doing this as an adjustment layer is you can come back here and double click on it. If you want that to go much lighter, you can drag it up here if it's a very shiny object on there. Or you can adjust this however you want. And maybe I had it set at 15, maybe I'll make this set at 20. So again, I've added the little bit of lightness on there, but I haven't affected the underlying artwork. I can always turn this off if I want to. Now we're going to work on the uh, shadow side here, or the, the, uh, the side panel here. I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of going light, what I'm going to do is go dark. So select that artwork panel here. Same thing as before. I'm going to come down here and create an adjustment layer, but you want to hold that option key down and click on it. We're going to do hue and saturation. Again, you'll get this dialog box. I only want this to affect the side panel, so I'm going to click that, hit OK. And now in Properties, now we're going to do kind of the same thing, but we're going to go dark this time. So again, this is the shadow side, so I'm going to drag this down and make it a little darker in there. All right. I may come back and make it lighter. I may come back and make it darker. So that's the beauty of working with adjustment layers is you can always come back and adjust them. So again, I've got this darker side shadow side here. But again, remember that light is coming from the upper left hand corner here. It's going to come down here. If this was a surface, it's going to bounce back up and there's going to be a little bit of reflected light. So same thing you'll see on the adjustment layer. There's a mask layer here. I'm going to grab my gradient tool and I'm going to click and drag from and go black to white so that you can see the shadow is darkest over here on the leading edge and I've got a little bit uh, of the reflected light in there. That might be too much. I'm going to hit Command Z and I'm going to start my gradient back here a little further. That looks a little bit better because it's just a little bit of reflected light in there. It's not really anything major. So already this is starting to look a lot more realistic in here. And so we've got the front panel uh, the uh, side panel let's talk about this cast shadow here all right and if i go back to my example here um actually the sphere works better um it's going to be sharpest closest to my object and it's going to get blurrier as you go away from this so and you'll notice it's not perfectly sharp at the edge even when it's really really close so here's what we're going to do I'm going to select my shadow layer here. Let's zoom in on it so we can see it a little bit better. So it's, it should be sharpest here where it touches the corner, but it shouldn't be a perfect line here. So what I'm going to do is on my shadow layer, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to the filter drop down menu 
and I'm going to come here and do blur. And I always use Gaussian blur. And if you do it too much, it's going to start looking like this is floating off the page here. So it's this was set at seven. You only need to do it one or two pixels. You just need a little bit of a blur to it. So I've got it set at two pixels now. It's a little bit of a blur. And now what we're going to do is we're going to mimic it getting blurrier and blurrier as you go back. And this is the way, this is my little trick how I do it. What I'm going to do is come up here. I'm going to grab my lasso selection tool here. And I'm going to set the feather on this at, I'm going to say 25 pixels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and circle my shadow. I'm not going to go all the way to the tip there. And what I'm going to do is blur this a little bit more. And I'm going to come back here to Gaussian Blur. Now this, I'm going to go a little bit more, let's say five on here. And what's nice about this is because I put the feather on there, you're not going to see a big transition between this because it's going to be soft because of this uh, 25 pixel feather I put on here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now I'm going to take my lasso. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do this over and over again. But each time I'm going to grab a little less of the shadow. So blur, Gaussian blur. And again, because there's a feather on the selection, you're not going to see a big jump and steps in here. So I'm going to hit OK, do it a little again. Now we're getting further and further away from the box. You could probably even blur this a little bit more. Do one last one here. And let's take a look. That one may have gone too far. Let's see. Nope. So you can see my shadow is sharp at the corner where it should be as it falls away here you can see it getting blurrier and blurrier. Now, it doesn't look realistic yet. And the reason for that, I'm looking over here, probably need to blur this a little bit too, this edge. Let's go back here, probably too much. Now, this doesn't look realistic, and the reason for that is it's solid black going all the way back. If we go over here and look at this again, not a good example there. It should fall away and get lighter as it gets further and further. And the reason for that is, again, the light is coming back here. It's bouncing off the background. It's bouncing off the surface. It's going to start filling this in a little bit. So what you can do is on your shadow layer, add a mask on here. And again, your gradient tool, this is your friend. I have added a layer mask on here and now what I'm going to do is click over here and drag towards my box. I'm going black to white and it's going to have that uh, shadow fade out. could even fade it out a little bit more if I wanted to. Let's see. And, you know, it's actually not looking bad here. So you don't need a whole lot of shadow on there. It's just what it's going to do. It's going to sit it on uh, the surface here and give it give it kind of ground it, and that's going to help make it look realistic in here. And so once you've done that, what you want to do is go ahead and save this as your layered file here. So let me do all my demos here. And once you now have your layered kind of working file, you can always come back and work on this if you need to make changes, if you need to adjust the lighting on here. Uh, so this is going to be the layered working file that you keep. And then when you're done with this and you want to submit it, you want to create a second file by coming up here and flattening everything. And get in the habit too of changing the mode from RGB to CMYK. Now there may be a color shift on here. We'll see. Wasn't too bad on there. And then what you want to do is save this as a TIFF file. And make sure I always label stuff with stupid names on here, except if it's going to a client 
or an instructor. Make sure you put your last name on here. And I believe this is 04G, if I'm not mistaken. And change this to the TIFF file format. Um, and go ahead and hit save. And when you're done with this, you can either upload it to Canvas. If it's a really large file, you might want to use wetransfer.com and send it to the class Gmail account. But once you do that, you'll be done with the three-dimensional render. Uh, and in the following video, what I'll do, this is obviously going over Illustrator and Photoshop. If you want to try and do it in Adobe Dimension, uh, check out the next video.